Okay folks, brace yourselves, nothingness does not exist. Or to put it another way, nothing does not exist. Unbelievable. In this video, we clarify once and for all what nothingness is, so make sure you stay tuned until the end. And if you like it, I'm galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment, because that way the YouTube algorithm will show this video to even more people. Thank you guys and welcome. Ex nihilo nihil fit. Nothing comes from nothing, as the ancient philosophers already knew, but it's wrong, as we'll see in a moment. The first thing that came to mind when I heard this phrase was the Big Bang. According to this ancient theory, the universe was created 13.8 billion years ago in a singular event. Everything that exists today was squeezed into a tiny point, a singularity, and then suddenly everything began to expand and exist in the first place. According to the theory, there is no such thing as a pre-Big Bang. So you would have to say that something did indeed come into being out of nothing, namely, the entire universe. But what is the situation today now that everything somehow exists? Is there still nothing? What is nothing anyway? Before we go any further, let me know in the comments how you would define nothing. What is nothing? I'm super excited about your attempts to explain it and will answer as many as possible, I promise. When we try to think of nothing, it somehow doesn't work. Even if you get the feeling that a lot of people are trying really hard to think of nothing, many people would simply say nothing is a big black void, but black is not nothing. Emptiness is perhaps more like it. What if we take an empty piece of the universe, a piece of vacuum, is there nothing in it? Unfortunately, I have to disappoint you guys, it's still not nothing, but quantum foam. Let's think about our empty piece of the universe again. First of all, we would realize that even empty space is not a perfect vacuum. Even in the particularly empty areas of the cosmos between the galaxies, there is so-called intergalactic matter, very, very thin accumulations of hydrogen and dust. I can hear some of you suggesting now, then let's just suck out the hydrogen and dust. Then we'll have a perfect vacuum of nothing. Okay, what would happen if scientists took our cosmic box and removed all the intergalactic stuff from it to create an ideal vacuum that is completely free of matter? The removal of matter would result in energy remaining, much like the sun's energy that can travel through empty space to Earth. The heat from the other parts of the cosmos would radiate into our vacuum. The area would therefore not really be empty, but we can solve that too. We simply cool the area to the lowest possible temperature, absolute zero, so that it no longer radiates any energy at all. We also build walls around this area of the universe so that no more energy or radiation can penetrate from outside. Then there would be absolutely nothing inside this cosmic box, right? Wrong. Unfortunately, quantum physics, the part of physics that deals with the very smallest levels and which often contradicts our apparent reality, throws a spanner in the works. Although we have vacuumed our box and cooled it to zero, the quanta refuse to remain inactive. Even in such a perfect vacuum, subatomic particles keep popping up and disappearing again. A bit like the bubbles in the bath foam when you play happily with your squeaky duck, that's why it's called quantum foam. But before you dive straight into a bath to become a quantum physics pro, let's first clarify what quantum foam is. One of the most confusing of all quantum principles, and they're all confusing, is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And I'm not talking about the Heisenberg from Breaking Bad, but the physicist Werner Heisenberg. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is generally explained by the fact that it is not possible to measure the location and movement of a subatomic particle perfectly at the same time, for example. When Heisenberg discovered this, some of his contemporaries probably said, then why don't you buy better equipment if your measurements are so imprecise, Werner? But the clue is that this imprecision cannot be remedied by better measuring devices. It is of a fundamental nature. Subatomic particles simply cannot be determined simultaneously for two specific measurements. To explain this with a very far-fetched comparison from the macrocosmos, if I were a subatomic particle, it would not be possible to precisely determine my chocolate consumption and my waist size at the same time, which would be very advantageous for me. The principle also states that you can't measure the energy of something perfectly and that the shorter the time in which you measure it, the worse the measurement. Taken to the extreme, this means that the measurement is infinitely inaccurate if you carry out the measurement in a time span of almost zero. But what does all this have to do with our search for nothingness? A lot. 
Because if we now try to measure the amount of energy in our cosmic vacuum box, even if this energy is supposed to be zero, we can never measure exactly zero due to the uncertainty principle. Sometimes it turns out during the measurement that the expected zero is not zero, and as we have already established, this is not a measurement error, but a quantum physical property of reality. For short periods of time, the zero point is not always zero. Heisenberg prevents the existence of nothingness. You're goddamn right. Now you might be saying, well, then the measured energy is not always zero, but somehow there is still nothing in the vacuum. But don't say that, people, because you'll make Albert Einstein turn over in his grave. Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared, states that energy equals matter and vice versa. In conjunction with quantum theory, this means that space in a place that is theoretically empty and devoid of energy can fluctuate to a non-zero energy. And this temporary energy can turn matter into particles. To put it more simply, if quantum physical energy bubbles such suddenly pop up in our quantum foam, then in principle we also have matter, since according to Einstein energy and matter are interchangeable. Apparent nothingness in apparent empty space is therefore never nothing, rather the supposed nothingness is a pulsating place where tiny subatomic particles appear and disappear again, which also means that our entire existence is a bath in quantum foam. Nice, so never shower again. One more thing for the very skeptical among you who are wondering whether this can be proven. You can, with the Casimir effect. Imagine you put two metal plates in a vacuum container. These plates are only one millimeter apart. If the idea of quantum foam is correct, then the area around the plates is filled with a flood of subatomic particles that flash in and out of existence. And that is exactly how it is. In 2001, scientists succeeded in proving the Casimir effect. The pressure created by the quantum foam causes the plates to move, so the quantum foam is real. So nothing is never nothing. Phew, I don't know about you, but my head is really buzzing, probably because it's full of quantum foam. So let's deal with something exciting, something earthly, something a bit simpler. For example, the deep sea. Down deep in the Mariana Trench, something is slumbering that influences the whole planet, that is even responsible for your existence. No joke. Oak. To dive to the bottom of the Marianne Trench with me, click on the video below. And if you want to support the channel, don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, guys.